Hey everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander, I'm BK. We're on Discord, Instagram, and Patreon, links in the description. In this variety game, Matt is playing Giada, Font of Hope. This is an angel tribal plan that's focused on making those angels even bigger, as if they needed it. J-Man is playing Thimbershod. He's gonna try to have it enter the battlefield a bunch of times to deal all sorts of damage. And it just has a bunch of mono-red good stuff. Busterkin's brought Azuri to the table. It's elf tribal looking to pump the team and overwhelm his opponents. And we have Chris playing Narset, Enlightened Exile. This is basically a prowess tribal deck, but Narset says, I want more prowess. Us. We'd love your support in the form of a subscribe, if you haven't already, and stick around for an appearance from my fat cat Meatball. He's so chunky. Matt kicked things off by playing a Plains and passing to J-Man who played a Mountain before passing over to Busterkins. He drops a Forest and says Go as well, over to Chris who played a Deserted Beach, entering Tapped. And let the record show, turn one resulted in zero Soul Rings being played. On Matt's turn two, he plays a Plains into a Pearl Medallion, reducing the costs of his white stuff. J-Man plays a Mountain and he uses it to cast Ornithopter of Paradise, a mana dork that flies. Does it get any better than that? He passed a Busterkin, who drops a forest and plays a Wirewood Elf. Also a mana dork, but it doesn't fly, so, hmm. On Chris's turn, he plays a Training Center, that ETB's untapped, of course, and he drops an Arcane Signet before passing the turn over to Matt. Before turn three, I want to take a moment to give a huge shout out to Antonio R. Thank you so much for your support over on Patreon. He plays another planes, no surprise there. And then he casts his commander, Giada, Font of Hope. She's an angel dork that makes angels bigger. He then casts Youthful Valkyrie. This enters the battlefield. Giada says, yo, get another plus one plus one counter on it. And then he passes the turn over to J-Man, who plays another mountain. He then taps out for sneak attack. So now he could play a single red manas to drop a thing from his hand, all for the low, low cost of killing it at the end of the turn. On Busterkin's turn, he plays a Beast Caller Savant. It's another mana dork. There's a lot of mana dorks out right now. He then plays Wirewood Herald. When that thing dies, he can go find an elf. That's pretty good. He passes the turn over to Chris, who plays a tapped Mystic Sanctuary. And then he casts Monastery Mentor. This dude's like, I got prowess and I'm gonna make dudes with prowess. He passes the turn over to Matt, and Matt plays an Archaeomancer's Map. This will have him go find two basic playing cards, put them into his hand, and maybe he can get extra land drops because of it, but he's the first player, so we'll see. He plays Starnheim Aspirant as a follow-up play, further reducing the costs of his angels. That's pretty good. He moves to combat with his Vigilancy Commander at J-Man, dealing two points of damage before he passes the turn. J-Man draws and plays Hellrider, a hasty threat that can ping his opponents when things attack. Despite its haste, he decides to hold it back, assessing that it wasn't really worth attacking. Busterkins plays Elvish Rejuvenator on his turn, so he'll look at the top five cards and find a basic forest, and he gets to put that onto the battlefield tapped. He passes back to Chris, and on his turn, he plays his commander Narset Enlightened Exile, so things have prowess, and he'll likely get to cast free spells. On Matt's turn, he drops a Plains, and then he casts Folk Hero. So now, once per turn, when he casts an Angel, he'll get to draw an extra card. And speaking of Angels, he casts Angel of Destiny. This has an interesting way of gaining life for him and an opponent, and it could potentially knock opponents out of the game. It enters with two counters on it, he drew a card, and he goes into the red zone with his commander swinging at Chris for two points of damage, then Angel of Destiny says you both gain life. On J-Man's turn, he plays Horde Hauler, a vehicle that could potentially make him some treasure tokens. He passes the turn over to Busterkins. He drops Elvish Guidance on one of his forests. This thing can tap and add a bunch of green mana equal to how many elves are in play. He passes the turn to Chris, who plays Balmor, Battle Mage Captain. This thing can help pump the team, giving them trample as well. Then he casts Expedite, targeting Balmor. This will trigger prowess on each one of his creatures, as well as Balmor pumping them plus one plus oh and giving them trample. He gets to make a monk that also has prowess. And of course, Expedite also lets him draw a card. Then he'll play a land for turn, in this case, Sacred Foundry, entering the battlefield untapped at the cost of two life. He casts Slip Through Space, targeting his commander. Another cantrip-like spell. This will trigger all of the prowess, as well as Balmor, giving another plus one plus oh, creating another monk token as well. Chris casts Swords to Plowshares on Angel of Destiny. In response, and with Matt's Fury, he casts Fateful Absence on Narset, destroying it, and Chris gets to make a clue token as well. Angel of Destiny will disappear forever. And also, everything on Chris's board triggers once again. More prowess, more Balmor, and another monk. 
Chris, being not very happy that his commander just died, moves to attack Matt, dropping him down to 28 before he passes the turn. He cleans up his board, and Matt draws his card for turn. He then plays another planes as his land for turn, before tapping out to cast Platinum Angel. So right now, he can't lose the game, and opponents can't win the game. Must be nice. He draws a card off of Folk Hero, and that enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. He passes, and J-Man casts Dragon Speaker Shaman, reducing the cost of his dragon spells. That's good. He crews that Horde Hauler and moves into combat at Chris, and Chris just decides to take the beats, and J-Man gets to generate two treasure tokens. Hell Rider also triggered on the attack, and Chris will update his life in just a moment. He passes the turn over to Busterkins, but on his end step, Busterkins casts Collected Company. He'll look at the top six cards of his library, and hope to get some elves off the top. Unfortunately, this man whiffs, like completely whiffs. I'm so sorry, Busterkins. Chris fixes his life because of Hell Rider, and on Busterkins' turn proper, he drops Wild Wanderer. So this thing will have him go find a basic land card, putting it out onto the battlefield tapped. Following that, he casts Icon of Ancestry, pumping his elf team and potentially finding him some elves off the top of his library. So he'll go ahead and activate that, looking at the top three, and again, hoping for an elf. He finds a Realm Walker. That's a changeling that says, I'm an elf. So he puts that into his hand and passes the turn over to Chris. On his first main phase, he casts Brainstorm, triggering all of his good stuff getting another monk token, and pumping the team plus one plus oh, and giving them trample as well. Plus, of course, prowess. And then he resolves Brainstorm, drawing the top three, and putting two cards from his hand back. He follows that up by casting Leap. Again, getting another monk out onto the battlefield, triggering all of his prowess, as well as triggering Balmor once again. Leap targeted his Monastery Mentor, so he'll gain flying, and he gets to draw a card. He then casts Boris Charm. All of his things on the battlefield trigger once again, and he gives double strike to his Monastery Mentor as well. Following that, he'll move his creatures into the red zone, sharing the love and attacking each one of his opponents. He drops them down to 36, 7, and 22, respectively. And that Platinum Angel has Matt feeling pretty safe. On his turn, he casts Herald of War, and that is yet another cost reduction effect, so all of his angels are super cheap. That comes in with three plus one plus one counters, and he casts Evison Angel of Hope. So not only is that indestructible, but all of his stuff is indestructible. So and again, that Platinum Angel doing some work now. He moved into combat, pinging Chris for a few. On J-Man's turn, he crews his Horde Hauler and then moves into combat towards Chris. He takes his beats, takes his Hellrider damage, and he gets a couple more treasure tokens. J-Man then uses those treasures to cast Warstorm Surge. So he continues to build his engine, and if he starts dropping big things, they can start dealing a lot of damage. On Busterkin's turn, he casts Realm Walker, so he'll be able to start peeping the scene on the top of his library and cast elf cards because of it. He cast Elven Ambush, which makes him a bunch of elf warrior creature tokens. He used Elvish Guidance to do so, which is not an activated ability, even though it just said activate on the screen a moment ago. Oops. He then uses Icon of Ancestry and finds a Cultivator of Blades off the top of his library. He then passes the turn, Chris cleans up his board a little bit, and then on his turn casts Kaikar Wind's Fury. So he'll start making spirit tokens when he's casting his cantrips, and he can make those spirits become mana. On Matt's turn, he drops Swift Foot Boots. This is probably not good because he equipped it to his Platinum Angel. Now it's indestructible and hexproof. He then casts Resplendent Angel, and that could potentially make him some angel tokens. Using his commander and his remaining lands, he casts a very discounted Bruna, the Fading Light. That will enter with six plus one counters on it. He doesn't have a good target in his bin though. He drops a planes and then he moves into combat, swinging at J-Man and Busterkins, smashing into them with some of his big beefy angels. He passes the turn to J-Man who drops a mountain and then he goes and activates his sneak attack, dropping a Blightsteel Colossus onto the battlefield. This triggers Warstorm Surge, so he will have the damage be flung at Busterkins, dropping him to 19. He activates Sneak Attack again, dropping Dracuseth, Maw of Flames, dealing 7 damage this time to Matt, dropping him to 0, but he's still alive. Stalking Vengeance is then snuck out, so this will again trigger Warstorm Surge, dealing 5 points of damage to Chris. And J-Man's patience building his engine looks to be paying off. He's doing some work now. He drops Scourge of the Throne with Sneak Attack, again triggering Warstorm Surge, he'll have the five points of damage hit Chris. 
J-Man got a bit land screwed, it looks like, but he's still doing work despite it. He moves into combat with those hasty threats, and Dracuseth says, yo, deal four, three, and three damage to stuff. And so, so J-Man kills all of Chris's board except for his monks, and swinging Blightsteel and Dracuseth at Chris. And he swung his Scourge of the Throne at Busterkins, having the highest life total. So those attacking creatures will untap, and he gets another attack step after this. Chris chumped Blightsteel Colossus with all of his monks, only taking five poison. He moves into combat again, and this time he swings Blightsteel at Chris, knowing that that's going to knock him out of the game, and the other two attackers go at Busterkins, knocking him out of the game as well. And on J-Man's end step, all of those creatures that were snuck out are going to die. This will trigger Stalking Vengeance, so he'll throw a whole bunch of damage at Matt, dropping him to negative 24. That was everything that J-Man had. If it wasn't for that Platinum Angel, I'm sure things would be different right now, of course. On Matt's turn... He decides to get cheeky by casting an Angel of Serenity, removing all of the blockers off of J-Man's board before he swings into combat, dealing so much damage to J-Man. That makes Matt the winner. Congratulations, piloting your mono-white Angels deck. Well, it looks like J-Man assessed that there was not much he could do against Matt's board state, so he went out in a blaze of glory. This had him King Make Matt in the end of it, but sometimes that happens. And as promised, here's Meatball. And there you have it, that's the game. Please let us know what you thought about the game in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, we would really appreciate that. It truly helps the channel out a lot. Check us out on Instagram, Discord, and Patreon. And as always, thank you for watching.